finally made it. The internet was being very cruel to me today and wasn't letting me go live. So I was stressing out big time. But I'm here, so that's great. Hopefully a few of you jump on. When you do jump on, you might see a little subscribe to Kylie's videos button. I've learnt that. That's a new thing I've learnt this week. So you can subscribe and that way you won't miss any of my live classes. Hello, we've got people jumping in. Yay. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Lisa. Great to have you here. So, yes, I was having a few technical errors, as, you know, can happen with live video. The joys of live. Sometimes it doesn't work the way you want it to. Hey, Nikki. Hi, Samantha. Great to have you here. So nice to have so many jumping in. Woohoo! <laughs> Excellent. And you're in for a treat today. I've had so much overwhelming response, really, on my card, which I was very happy about because uh, it took probably, I don't know, three or four hours to work out how to make this card. But the principles are going to be great. From now on, I'll be able to do this type of card. And I was actually thinking as I was making it, how can I teach this card as well? It's one thing just sort of putting it together and making it work. But then being able to replicate it and do it again is a whole nother level. So, yeah, I was very, very happy. Here's a little pop open door. It's super cute. And I can just see so many different uh, things that I'm going to use this for. I was thinking of the dinosaurs and... Yeah, there's just so many cool things that I thought I know my nephews are going to absolutely love a card like this. So, but even as an adult, I don't know if it was um, the same with you. Hey, Carolyn. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Priscilla. And thanks for getting the tutorial bundle too. That was very sweet of you to purchase that. Hello, Judy. Hi, Nikki. Great to see you all. So, uh... I had a, I think it was like one of mum's really good friends growing up who actually went overseas and she came back with this amazing pop-up book. And I think that was the first fascination I had with pop-up books. And it was a mixture of opening and it popping up and moving and these tabs. And I've always wanted to work out how to do it. And it was quite nostalgic for me to be able to do this. Uh, and work out a way of doing the pop-up cards. So would you like to find out how you can do it? It's pretty full on, but I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. So I actually changed the directions that I found online and just adapted it a little bit to make it a lot easier. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Ethan. So there's a few other things that I did this week. Been creating as usual, so I thought I'd show you those before we jump into the class, just in case... There's a few people still jumping in. Hey, Fiona. <laughs> so this was a card that I did for Bibi Cameron. You probably can't tell. We did a blog hop with the Crazy Crafters and Bibi. Bibi's like so talented. She's on the Global Design Project with us. Sorry, it's back to front because I've got a front-facing camera. Hopefully Facebook will fix that eventually. But, um, yeah, we had a great time. Hey, Corinne. We had a great time. Um hopping with Bibi and being inspired by her and I loved there was a, a bag that she made out of the floral thinlets and I thought how interesting making something a little bit different with the floral thinlets so I decided to do this crushed curry little note card so it's actually quite tiny it's 10 centimeters by 20 so um, but I really like it I think it's a really sweet card a really nice thank you card and that way um, there's not as much work involved in adding the little bits in. I only added in the crushed curry bits. So just a few little pops of the um, crushed curry I added in. And do you want to see the tool that I used? It's pretty full on. And I'm, I think that this is going to be a tool that all of you are going to want to look into getting for yourself. We'll see if I can find it now. <laughs> I can actually make it myself for you right now. But one thing with the small little pieces like this, oh, that is a bummer, Lisa, um, is the challenge of making sure that you get all your, oh, you know what, I'm not going to find it now, it's so typical, but you know what, I'll make it for, I'll make the tool for you right here. Just bear with me, I need to get my supplies. So this is to help 
um, keep basically to pick up the small pieces because it is a bit frustrating picking up little pieces like that. So this is the tool number one, a nice Stampin' Up on stage pen that is not open, and the other bit of the tool is some super famous blue tack. And then you stick it on the end of your pen and that becomes your little piece of picker upper. -er. How cool is that? And it was so good. Like I was picking up pieces everywhere. And then once you put the glue on, it actually was like not sticky enough that it actually let go pretty easy. So that's my that's my makeshift tool. Pretty expensive stuff, this one. So yes, blue tack and a pen. That is how you move little pieces around. Or you could get tweezers, but I actually like being able to put it in place. I don't know, tweezers seem a little bit awkward for me, but I do have tweezers there as well. You could make a combination of both, the pen and the tweezers. So anyway, that's that one. And then we did an, our first international visual blog hop. So we actually had a gallery that we prepared earlier um, and there's a few of you girls that are here today that played along with that and that was a lot of fun. So we had a gallery of pictures. Um, it's still, you can still see it now. You can go anytime and when you click on it, it takes you to everyone's um, blogs. And this is the card that I made. I really love the colours of Spermuda Bay and Daffodil Delight. And I, I've always wanted to use this stamp set and I just love it used on this card. Like it's very bold in this corner and fresh, but um, I love the white um, space that is created there as well. And I just layered the white on white. So I used the, um, the thick white cardstock for this one um, and just did a dimensional in there. And these ones, I think, I should have a look. I didn't actually see it. was a mixture of two of the flower sets on this one. So it was one from the annual catalogue previously. And oh, I'm not going to find them now. I bet you're... Oh, actually, they're on my desk still. Yes, here they are. <laughs> I had them there from when I was vlogging. So Falling Flowers and Flower Patch were the other ones. So I did a combination. So... The bigger flower, and that one there is the yellow one. So that's those two. And then for the little little bits, I've got a little bit there and those ones there. Yeah, so there we go. And then I just cut that one out. That was with the Scenic Sayings stamp set. I really love that stamp set. I've got to use it more often because there's some really cool stamp sets in that one. Sorry it's back to front. So random how it does that. But you get the idea. You get the drift. So that's that one. That was the international. And I just did a little bit of watercolouring on that one too in the little bits here. Yeah, those ones. And the other one that I wanted to show you was my... Uh, <laughs> My new fascination with chocolate. I think a lot of you liked that one. Uh, that was the one based on the new um, Lint Coconut Chocolate. Holy moly, that stuff is good. So there's my card. I never, ever would have thought of putting Bermuda Bay and Gold Emboss together. And White Emboss. But the packet of the Coconut Lint Chocolate Balls inspired me to try it. And I was very, very happy with the results. And so were all of you. I got a lot of comments on this one. So it just sponged the edge and then I did another layer, just a couple of millimetres extra. Someone said, was that to like make it look like a block of chocolate? But it wasn't intentional. It was just like a design thing. So yeah, I really love that. That's the flourishing phrases, I think it's called. I always get all these flourishing ones wrong. Yeah. Flourishing phrases. Don't you love it when Bruno puts everything in alphabetical order? So yeah, that one's beautiful. And even the sentiment came from that as well. So literally that card was all made from the one stamp set. Sorry, it's upside down. Not that you know. Yeah. So that's a nice way to just use one stamp set to make a card. 
Today's card, however, is not using one stamp set, and it's not using one tool. I think I used just about every tool in my office. I just kept pulling things out. I was like on this creating frenzy and um, kept thinking of more things that I could add to this card. But it's very sweet and it's been totally worth it. So let's get started because this is going to be quite interesting. Yes, Priscilla, he can come and put your, your stamps in alphabetical order. Bruno, you've got a job. You've got to help Priscilla. <laughs> so let's have a look. I've got a, quite a lot of pieces here, so it's going to look a bit crazy. But anyway, we will work through it all. And the challenge is going to be, um, oh, actually, where are my little strips? Yeah, the challenge is going to be me finding everything that I made. Crazy town. So you have to bear with me. But I will get there in the end. It's quite a complicated card, but I am going to make it as least complicated as possible. So let's flip you around. Let's see here. Clip you off there. You can see I've been sponging already. I've got a few bits and pieces organized beforehand because I was like, this card is going to take forever otherwise. Come on, flip. That's it. Good job. All right. So hopefully I can still see all your comments there. Yes, I can. Excellent. Hi, Missy. So what we're going to start with is I'll bring the card over. So this mechanism here is actually really interesting and it's actually not too difficult to do. I mean, it did take me a long time to work it out, but I will try and make that as simple as possible. But let's just prep a few things first. So we'll, we'll do our little sky because that's actually, no, we won't. First, we'll make sure that we cut it because if anything happens and there's a mistake, at least we can go grab another panel. I don't like that. It's dirty. So I found the best thing to do, I did try and use the trimmer to start with, but because of this first cut here, it actually needs to be just a couple of millimetres wide. Um, and that's just to help the mechanism to move. You do need a little bit more movement there. So I just literally, I'm not even going to tell you, like this is just the normal base of a card. Um, so depending on what you're working with, if you're working in inches, I don't have the inches on me, but say your normal card base and then just a couple of millimeters or a, one of the 16th, whatever you guys say for inches, it's just a little bit cut down. So that's where the base is going to go. And I did it like that so that I could just easily glue the blue over the top. It's just easier than trying to Get them perfectly matched. Yay, Tanya. Oh, finally you got on, Lisa. I saw your message, but there's nothing I can do when I go live. I can't help people. It's so frustrating. They're like, help, I can't find you. And I'm like, I can't help. I'm live. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> nothing stops for live video. <laughs> so I just eyeballed this. And the best thing about a doghouse is it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfectly centered into the card so I just did uh with the knife I found that the easiest I did it to three centimeters I just did a little bit more than three centimeters because basically my thing is going to be three centimeters and then I just pulled away a little bit so it's not much more and then just came alongside to just cut a little bit more off because just having a slit is not going to help the mechanism. So just cut that out. I'm a bit brave for attempting this live, aren't I? There's so many things that could go wrong here. But it's going to go perfect. And if it doesn't, you'll all forgive me, I'm sure. Okay, so the next thing, I cut a strip three centimetres. Um... Not sure what that is in inches, about an inch and a half. Oh, no, it's a bit bit over an inch. So you could probably do an inch. So the key is going to be that we need to create this mechanism. 
And we're going to stick the doors, and this is something I learned afterwards, that I could actually stick both doors down. On my one, I actually took the time to make sure that the tab was perfectly the same, but I was like, oh, you idiot, it could have just covered it. But anyway, these are the things you learn afterwards, and then I can share them with you so you don't make the same mistakes. So about there is pretty good. That's where we're going to stick our little door onto. So I just folded that. So that's going to become our little tab. So first part of our little mechanism. Now on the back is where the magic happens. So this is where it's folded and this is on the other side. And so what we're going to add is just a little tab along here. Now we want this little strip to be seven millimeters. That's apparently what they said is good. So I just made a strip. Now, on some of the tutorials I saw, they had it all complicated and they had like an extra tab that was added and all cut out and it just became too complicated. So I just found this was just a really easy way of adding that little tab in. Actually, I'll do it a little bit shorter because then... I can cut that down because it doesn't need to be big, the tab. There we go. That'll do. Good. Now, the next step is to actually fold where the tab is. So see how I folded so that it's going to raise up. That's what's going to create the little mechanism. So that's why we need this frame to actually be on dimensionals because it needs to have that little frame there. Now there's two options to keep your little tab um, straight and working well. Uh, you could actually create a slit here and feed it through that. But I actually really liked a few of the tutorials where they had, um, I think that, oh, we'll do this one. They just created their own little mechanism to hold it in place. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I've just measured that. Now this is going to just hold it in place, but of course it's not going to be glued to the tab because we want that to keep moving. So I'm just going to glue the base. You can use fast fuse too, but I found because these pieces were a little bit thinner, it became a little bit challenging using the fast fuse. And I like, again, that you can just move things around if you need to. Okay, so that looks good. So that's going to be in place. And then I just glue the top down. Not too much glue. You don't want it to sort of spill out over into the pull tab because you want it to have plenty of movement. Okay, so while that dries, I won't sort of test it yet, but what we will do is add on our door. So a bit of glue here. And just make sure that you're not too far over, like you've got a little bit of room there for, for movement on the side. And then the back's nice and easy because you're just going to be replicating the back so I already did this in the wood hardwood I'm going to do another one with you just to show you how I did that just so you can see a bit of stamping because we all love a bit of stamping don't we and I've got a few tips of what I do with background stamps so this is what I usually do with my background stamp I don't mount it onto a clear block I actually stamp. I mean, I don't really need to stamp this whole thing, but anyway, we'll just do that because knowing me, the one bit I don't stamp will be the bit that I need. And then I just lay it down and do that. So it's like the opposite way. And I just find it so much easier. And it's just clearer. There, done. Clean you later. 
And then I just grabbed my amazing dauber kit. Ta -da! I've got them all labelled and I've got one of every dauber. It took me a while to collect them all. Every time I thought I had enough, I was like, oh, I don't have enough. Got to get some more daubers. So, yeah, I love, love, love having one in every colour. It just makes life so much easier. So I've just grabbed the early espresso and just be very grungy. Flick those edges. And then you can also come into the middle. Not too much with the early espresso because I really loved the, um, the look of the soft sway. I think it really softened it right up. Always, I always like to sort of dab off so you don't get those chunky bits of blobby, inky stuff on it. But you can see they're already... It's looking awesome. And you could just damp onto a color, like put on the soft suede even. But I really like the look of um, the white with the stamping and then sponging. Beck Gomez, hello, my friend. How nice to see you here. So that's just going to stick down on the back like I've done here. Ta-da! And I just used Tombow on that one again. Again, use the adhesive of your preference. I know some people love their fast fuse or their tape. Everyone has their thing. So as you can see, I have gone completely wonky, but we're going to make it look amazing. See, we should be able to pull that now. You really can't make a mistake with a doghouse because where is a doghouse laid, really? But note to self, you could probably cut over here. <laughs> Just so you know for next time. <laughs> so that's that's the little popping mechanism. So how simple was that? Did Was that not comp... I hope I didn't make it complicated for you all. But what I'm going to have to do now is make sure that I stick down the, the sky now. See, look... <laughs> This is this is the fun of live live TV. I'll do it to there. I'll do it to, as far as it will let me do it. Hang on, see if I can still pull it off. Ooh, it's got a bit of movement still. See, if I use fast fuse, there's just no way. It would have been all over Red Rover. But anyway, I'll tuck that in as far as I can go. Oh, the mechanism's there. Hopefully I didn't pull that. Anyway. It's staying there, people. And then we'll glue that down and I'll just chop down the edge. We'll have more grass and flowers than clouds. And then I'll glue that back down. Okay. And hopefully I didn't... Oh, no, it's still working. So that's good. And then I already punched the little Bella out. And this time, but guess who called me? Louise Sharp. She's going to get in so much trouble later. She should be watching me, not ringing me. Anyone would think that she has her own business to run. Normally, I'm very good, and I remember to put it on do not disturb mode. But last time I did that, I never turned it back on. And so I was on do not disturb mode forever. <laughs> so... I really like little Bella being in the white, but this one I just did sponging. So I just sponged it with my door bar. I really didn't, I wasn't fussy about colouring it. So that's another option as well. So that's that section. How cute. Hello, little Bella. Now the door, the door I used the owl punch. I really loved the shape of this. It took me a little while to work out what I was going to use for the door. And I didn't want to just, so I just cut off the feet of the owl. Sorry, owl, I'm cutting your head as well. Chop in. But I just really loved the look of it, and I loved the shape, how it sort of comes in. It kind of, yeah, reminded me of a doghouse. Uh, actually, I put this on dimensionals as well, because everyone knows how much we love dimensionals in this family. Some more than others. 
Okay, so that's looking good. Now let's do some grass. So I used the same cucumber crush and I used our fringe scissors. Whoa, I hope you've all got these fringe scissors. They are seriously amazing. Oh, look at all those cuts I just did in one go. It's like the perfect handmade grass ever. Hi, Faye. Thanks. They're my jamborees. I try and have new new jamborees every time I do one of my videos. But they're really good. They actually last quite a few weeks, the jamborees. They've really surprised me. So then I just did my favorite adhesive of all time, Tombow Along the Edge. And then glued that down. And you could even, I've even seen some people do like layers of grass. You could probably do like other ones. Yeah, you've got to use them for this now, Lisa. We've got to use our fringe scissors more. They're super cute for this type of thing. So yeah, just smoosh that up because grass is never perfect, is it? And then what I did was, I thought I'd try something different this time and I did a different color green for the stem. And the stem, I used the sprinkles punch. So it's that one there. And that can get stuck down. Now, because we've got so much space down the bottom here, I could probably decorate this a little bit more and add a few more. Oh, don't you hate that? Add a few more flowers if I wanted to. But yeah, I love my eyeballing. My eyeballing ends up the doghouse completely out of place. <laughs> So see how, you know, they look completely different, but it's just them upside down. So they can give a completely different look. So I always like to cut in strips for the punches like this because then you don't waste as much cardstock. There's nothing worse than coming in and then getting stuff everywhere that you don't need. So you can just do another punch on the strip. And I do that with most of the, the punches. Uh, I'll go this way. There we go. And then the flower petals, they can come in and just be on dimensionals as well. And the best part is being able to cut the edges or cut one of the dimensionals in half because you don't need a big amount. Actually, I'll cut it along here. It's great having like little half, half dimensionals. Now with my original card, I actually stamped the flowers, but with this, you could probably just sponge them if you wanted to. I've just left it plain for now, but I'll probably come back and sponge them a little bit. Actually, I'll take that off. I've got another flower here that I didn't think I'd have room to use, but now I do. So these flowers are from the, I'm pretty sure it's called Blossom Punch, this one. So that one's a really good one. You can just play with them a bit. Yeah, I could add a tree. That's a good idea, Lisa. I had these big flowers though, so it's actually worked out quite good. It's all about working out where to place everything. And again, you know, this would look a lot better with some stamping. Just even, um, I think the blossom, is it the blossom punch? The blossom, where is it? Um, I think I must have pulled it out. Anyway, it is here somewhere, but there's like a little um, dot that you could put in the middle there that just makes it look like the inside of the, flower and same with these just a couple of little dots would make a big difference 
So, and then just the clouds, I'd use the tree punch, tree builder punch. And I did a mixture of things actually. So I did a partial strip. I love the strips because you can just cut them down to whatever size you need. So the strips are a lot higher than the other foam adhesives. So I put the main one in the front and centre. Then I did some in the normal adhesive, the dimensionals, so that then it was like another layer down. And then just come off half and then I'm going to cut that. And then the last one I just did directly. And just did that with Tombow. Oh, what a surprise. It's the top of an adhesive. <laughs> I find those things everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool that now it opens up and it's still in the card, but yeah. You get the drift. You get the idea. As long as you, hopefully from this tutorial, you've learnt how to do the mechanism, then I'm happy. I'm a happy camper. So I'll just cut those off from the edge so that they're all happy. Oh, I hope I haven't cut it. I forgot about that. Look, I've <laughs> probably gone too high. <laughs> I have to cut off the edge, but that's all right. We'll work out a way. Done. And then I'll bring this down a little bit. Hopefully it won't cut too much off the top. Okay. Normally I'd just use my trimmer for this, but for the sake of live TV, we'll just cut it. Oh, I'll cut a little bit off, but it still looks very cute. So there's those things. And then literally all that's left to do is to add your little sentiment, which I added the banners for you. I did the little hello, but I thought even for you was super cute. And where is it here? They're actually quite big. You actually get a big surprise when you open these up. And they're super cute. So I get that one. And I did it on early espresso. And I've got a little piece here. Let's stamp that. And just to make sure that I could use another punch because, you know, I haven't used enough. <laughs> I used this punch, but I just um, trimmed the edges. So I probably should have done it a little bit longer on the side. It's always the way. Come here. Come on. Okay, got it. I'll go in from the side. Okay, so I just punched that. I just used it as basically to punch the the side out. And then I had to make sure that it fit within the, because I had it longer. I actually had the full one, but then it sort of caught up in the edge. So then I just cut with my snips. And then again, I just did a little, little strip using the foam strips. Stuck that down. And then I had one on the inside as well, so you could add that. I thought with the sentiment, it just looks more like a doghouse too. Hey, Martha, great to see you. So there's little Bella looking cute and you can add your little other sentiment in there if you like. So the next thing that I'm going to learn is how to open this mechanism and then the animal actually pop out, which would be really cool. So the other thing that you have to keep in mind that I already mentioned was, where did I put my little 
already pre-folded card. Honestly, you should see this place. It's so mayhem. I live in chaos in my stamp room. And I've got all these like prototypes of all the <laughs> all the different pop-up cards that I've made. You know what? I seriously cannot find it. I'll blame Jessie. Jessie's my assistant and I blame her for everything. Whenever anything goes wrong, I go, Ugh. Jessie hit it. Oh, it's okay, Jessie. You're off the hook. I found it. <laughs> now, the little tab punch, there's a few different things that you can do. But I thought that I would try these ones. I actually did this one, which is from the Baker's Box Thinlets, and then cut that in half. So that's what I used on my other one. But I just, I thought it looked a little bit bulky. So now I've decided to move to this one, which is from the Gift Card Envelope and Trim Thinlets die. I really love this little, um, label I actually use this quite often so it's a little bit big the pull tab so and it's a little bit crooked too but you're not seeing that it's perfectly straight everyone's seeing it straight and now I'm going to cut like on an absolute angle as well <laughs> you didn't see that either <laughs> but the best thing is, is I can actually come in and cut it all down anyway so you don't have to see it <laughs> So then I just use the Tombow or Fast Fuse, whatever you prefer. It probably would be good to use Fast Fuse in this section, actually. And so then I just did the little pull tab. And I liked that this was like an arrow. So it sort of gives off the impression that you want someone to pull it. So another bit there. And just make sure that it's lined up with the other one and then you can come in and just trim down the white section or if you want to keep it that's up to you but that's the little mechanism there for pulling and then all you have to do is just stick down I used the foam strips because I wanted the higher depth because these are quite yeah I think they're double the size of the regular dimensionals they're a lot higher so they're perfect for these pop-up cards, which hopefully we see more of. I really want to learn different techniques with pop-ups because I know that people love them. There's a lot of the cool um, fold cards and things like that now too that um, pop open and they just look so amazing. It's just another interactive way and I think... You know, we say, oh, it's for the kids, but I think adults love pop-up just as much as the kids. Yeah, the foam strips are brilliant, Lisa. Love Angie's Bella and Friends, especially since seeing Bella as a little puppy before they brought her home, watching her grow and then being introduced to Skittles. I take it Angie is a friend of yours, Melissa. Yeah, great for shaker cards. I'm hoping I'm not meant to know Angie and I'm hoping I'm not meant to know Bella. Our doggy's name is actually Bella. So when I saw Bella and friends, I was like, oh my goodness, I have to get that step set. So I've got Bella and Jasper. So that's the card. And look, it's still working. So that's a good sign. There's enough room underneath for it to be able to move. And then I already did an insert. I pre-did this just with the Cucumber Crush, which I'll just stick down on the inside with my Tombow. And then that is a completed card. So now I've got two of these cards, which is exciting. There we go. Ta-da! So it's a work in progress. I'm still learning, like, obviously where to place <laughs> the pop-up. But, um, oh, Angie designed the stamp set. I was thinking, oh, I take it I must, I'm meant to know Angie. Because of being in Australia, I don't know a lot of the designers and who made them and all that sort of thing. 
So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that you get um, some tips on how to make a pop-up card. But the key areas, I think, with the mechanism are, are just that little tab. I've got a little prototype here. Oh, yes, actually. So this was a prototype that I did. I should have followed that one. But just doing that little tab behind, three centimetres or a little bit over an inch, and just adding your little tab. The fold is really important and making sure that your fold is the right way. So folding it there and then adding your little guide. So enjoy everyone. I hope you like it. And um, thank you for watching my live class today. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see, please let me know. I've just popped up on my Facebook page. Um, I'm giving away these little three sampler packs. So if you wanted to, if you live in Australia and you want a chance to win one of these, I've actually got nine of them to give away. So that's them there, little mini swatch book sampler pack, three books. So I'll put the link up on the video and... Yeah, that's probably the main things that are happening at the moment. But thank you so much for joining me and I'm sure we'll hopefully see you all next week. Same time, same place. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming.